Hey guys, I'm Donna Yen, Cherry Bombs Event Director, and I want to welcome you to La Bodega Bakery's ultimate breakfast sandwich demo. Joining us from La Bodega Bakery are Sioux Pastry Chefs, Deandra Bailey, Nikki Rodriguez, and ba -ba -da -bum, our cover girl, Paula Velez, Executive Pastry Chef of La Bodega. And um, this is the latest issue of Cherry Bomb, Be the Change. Um, I wanted to make a brief announcement about the magazine. So Cherry Bomb is closed until mid-January. So if you'd like to pick up the latest issue, please be sure to shop our, from our, one of our stockists. Um, you can find a list of them on our website. Um, before we get started, I wanted to thank our sponsors, Kerrygold and Amazon Home, for supporting all our programming for holiday baking extravaganza. We've been able to make everything free thanks to them. We got the team, Team La Bodega here. Hi, guys. Hello. And we're all being socially distancing and being safe, so that's why we have all their masks on. But um, I'm excited. Oh. So what is the ultimate breakfast, breakfast sandwich at La Bodega? Hi, everyone. Um, so our ultimate breakfast sandwich has to be something that I grew up eating um, in New York City, uh, the Bronx. I'm wearing a shirt that says the Bronx right now. Uh, <laughs> And um, it's actually a perfect bacon, egg, and cheese. Uh, we're not going to demo how to make the brioche because that's my secret. It's the secret. It's the secret sauce, you know. <laughs> but we are going to teach you how to make delicious guava bacon. And we're going to um, show you how to cook the egg. I think that that's also half of the battle is learning how to cook a perfect egg. Most culinary students actually fail like their classes. Uh, but I learned how to do it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it today, too. Um, so before we start, I want to introduce Deandra Bailey again. <laughs> and Nikki Rodriguez. And they are some of the most wonderful human beings on the planet because they have to deal with my crazy behind all the time. Oh, and my husband is behind the scenes agreeing that I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it is our pleasure to bring you guys the ultimate bacon egg and cheese i know you guys are going to use this for christmas morning holiday morning mm -hmm. whatever morning you know festivus is on the 23rd so if you want to use that one too you know seinfeld plans you know anyways so now <laughs> to take it away to explain what to do when cooking a brioche, how to cook the most perfect brioche without giving away our secret recipe is the very, very shy Nikki Rodriguez. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. Hi Nikki. I don't really, um, I don't <laughs> okay. know what to say. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I'm coming in with the assist. I'm coming in with the assist. Don't leave, don't leave me, don't leave me. Um, okay, so what is your okay so what you guys don't know is that nikki is the brioche queen she makes all types of brioche bread our donuts and i'm talking about i have like minute variations in my recipes and i like make i'm like make sure you you don't put one gram of butter in this recipe and nikki follows the recipe to the t and has become the brioche queen you know so if we want to get your brioche and we want to get Nikki's baked goods, those of you can go and visit La Bodega Bakery for that. But for us, you know, I'm all the way in California. I'm going to have to live it vicariously through all of you. Um, but this looks amazing. And um, yeah, so so the brioche, so a lot of bacon, egg, and cheese, I mean, for me, I miss New York. I used to live in New York. So bacon, egg, and cheese is something you do every weekend or sometimes every morning for me on your way to work, you know. And I love the name La Bodega because, you know, bodegas are everywhere in New York and they're very, they're like the lifelines of these neighborhoods. And so I love that you paid homage to that with this, this ultimate bacon, egg and cheese. And it sounds really special. And I, I guess it all starts with the bread. So do we toast the bread? Like how, how yes. do you guys like to? Yeah, Nikki is cutting the brioche. I don't know if you can see in the up close um, Zoom situation that we have here. Hi. Yes. And show them the cross section, Nikki. Show them, show them closer, closer, closer. Wow. <laughs> so, so we um, make sure that we overproof almost our brioche hmm. and you get all of this beautiful like honeycomb texture. So 
the reason why we do that is because we're like baking this at such a high temperature, um, almost like flashing it in the oven, which according to baking rules, none of that makes sense. But with this recipe that we've modified over, how long have you known each other? Um, three years. At, over the course of three years, we've modified this brioche recipe um, to fit every single environment that we actually work in. In the summertime, it's a little bit different, but you know, when we modified this brioche recipe for this bacon, egg and cheese, I think Nikki made at least 200 rolls. Oh, wow. I do. Yeah. But I think now, now she makes 200 rolls um, every service. Yeah, every service. Um, well, These are great for burgers too. So like the base recipe for my brioche, we use it for quite a lot. We use it, um, but that everything is like from that mother recipe. And then we modified it over time. DeAndre and I, when I brought her the uh, plantain bun idea, uh, she took my base recipe and then I was like, add more sugar, less flour, more butter. And she's like, oh my God, really? <laughs> and we worked on it forever. The same thing with the donuts. When we did our pop-up for Dona Dona, man, when I tell you there was a lot of donuts involved with that, it's a lot of donuts. These so pop-ups right are so fun. I love it. Oh yeah. So, so what's happening right now? Right now, I'm just toasting the bread a little bit just to kind of like revive it, right? Like brioche, if you even if you bake it the same day, brioche likes to die, right? Because it's just like this, this high fat, it'll absorb the moisture, it gets kind of dense, but with a little bit of heat, it softens right back up. Oh. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this off and now we're going to leave this here so that Deandra can come in and talk a little bit about our guava bacon. Yes, you heard that correctly. Ooh, yeah. Guava, guava bacon. bacon. <laughs> okay. Guava bacon. Hi. Hi, Deandra. How are you? Good. I'm excited to hear about this bacon recipe because it kind of, you know, I'm sure those of you watching, you're familiar with like candied bacon. So it's kind of like that, but you're using guava paste. And I just have so many questions about this process. So how, how does it work? Okay, so I already have my bacon on a tray ready to go. Prior to this demo, I had to whip up my guava paste because it's super thick, super dense, doesn't want to spread at all. Mm -hmm. So once you whip it, it'll look something like that. Can, can there we go. Oh, right. wow. <laughs> where can you where can you get gua guava paste? Um, oh. at your local bodega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't have your local bodega, um, you can go to your local Spanish supermarket. Yes. And if you're trying to avoid a certain brand, then you'll be able to find variations of different guava paste. Um, or you can make your own with fresh guava, but that's pretty intense. I don't yeah, yeah. you you have to be prepared for a lot with that, but. Right now, um, do you want to explain what you're doing? Yes, I am gently cascading this paste over the bacon because like I said, it's super thick. So it does want to tear this uncooked meat. Um, it doesn't have to be super perfect. Once it starts to heat up in the oven, it will spread a little more and caramelize on its own. So I'm just heating. And this bacon looks food. pretty sturdy. So it's like a, is it like a thick cut bacon? It's actually, I chose to do um, a medium slice and it's not uh, smoked actually because I want all of that guava flavor to really meld with the meat. Um, mm -hmm. It is cured though. So it is still okay. cured bacon. It's not like hickory smoked, um, but it's pretty delicious once you start to experience the flavors. Um, so do you wanna explain why I don't cook the bacon in the flat top? Yes, so um, most bacon already comes with sugar and a couple of other additives. I'm trying <laughs> to hide with this. The, um, <laughs> added, <laughs> with the added guava paste, it definitely caramelizes super fast. So it burns the flat top. And also we have people who come in and just want egg and cheese, no bacon. So that takes out that cross-contamination factor by baking it by itself. Got also, it. it's the most ideal way to cook bacon. All of you guys who are watching the Zoom right now and who will watch it in the future, you can fight me on this fact <laughs> because it's the truth. It's, so it's because 
so if, when you're putting in the oven, then like, I guess for me, when I do it in the oven, I don't know, I, I've splattered it everywhere. I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm maybe overcrowding it. So do you have some tips on when you cook it in the oven? Uh, yes. So right now what Deandra is doing is she is actually putting it on a foil lined pan. Um, mm -hmm. That will almost act like if it were an actual pan or a flat top. So she's going to put it in the oven right now, but because of TV magic and we don't know how much we talk, we already baked some off. Woo! Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. How many, how, what's the temperature in the oven? And like, do we put it in the middle rack? Like, like so at home, to you're going to do 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and you're going to put it in the middle rack. So you're going to want to adjust your, um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna adjust the the wrap so that it actually hits the middle um that is like the most ideal perfect temperature for your bacon cooking situation and you're gonna want to start off at 15 minutes understanding that the top of the bacon will caramelize first before mm -hmm. the bottom so it all depends on what you prefer and what you like to eat as a bacon eater Baconator. Baconator. Can you say that? A bake, bake, I don't. Baconator. That's one. Baconator. <laughs> but baconator is like, didn't like some. Terminator? Oh, okay. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is um, half of the portion of like the guava situation that happens on our guava bag. Do you want to explain why <laughs> we put guava on these sandwiches? Yes. Um, growing up, I ate a lot of bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches, sausage, egg, and cheese, scrapple, egg, and cheese. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> but it was always paired with jam, jelly, a preservative. It was never just bacon, egg, and cheese, and then like butter as our spread. So when I introduced it to P, what, about a year ago? Well, she actually, um, because I'm very bad at managing my time and my uh, body, yes. uh, she <laughs> feeds me my square meals and then Hector feeds me my last square meal of the day. So I'm a very well kept young lady. <laughs> but she was making sure that um, I ate that morning yes, and she made me a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh yeah, and water. I don't drink water guys, I'm sorry. You know, 2021 oh, might be the year. <laughs> but Please explain um, how you did that and then why it kind of landed on this sandwich mm -hmm. on this portion of the bread. Okay, so I got it for a year ago and she was like, what is on my sandwich? You know, you break it open and you see it. You're like, oh, I know bacon, I know egg and then cheese. And you see like this little layer of like purplish dough. And she's like, what is it? Oh, I'm like, it's jelly. She's like, jelly? I'm like, so you don't need jelly on your bacon, egg and cheese? And she's like, I was like, okay, well, if you hate it, I'll make another one without it. And if you love it, this is how you're having your sandwiches. And then Lava Day wanted to create the alternate set. And here we are with guava on our sandwiches. And it's delicious. Um, that sweet and tanginess of the guava occurring with that hickory of the bacon gives a really good umami feel. And when you bite that with your cheese and your super buttery fluffy eggs, you're just, you don't want to die, die, but you want to die. So oh my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> I need to try this. I've never like thought about putting like, you know, like, yeah, guava paste. And I know there's all kinds of like other like jams you could probably play around with too. Um, we only do it on one side. I prefer the top half of the bun. As you can see, that'll be your hump. Ugh. I want to taste everything. If it's on my sandwich or whatever I'm eating, I want to know that it's there. So I did a healthy little serving of that. And I'm just pregnant. Nothing fancy at all. And don't stick in the middle, get all your edges. You should have it with every single bite. So Deandra, so the jam, so that's that's also guava paste that you had whipped up earlier. That's also going on top of the brioche. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, FYI for my home cooks, um, you should have two separate containers for your guava paste, one for your raw meat, one for your sandwich, just so that you're not, you don't make yourself sick, but um. Yes, already ripped, already ready to go. That is oh, the only reason why the it was super smooth, huh? Do you want me to get the other one? Ooh, that's <laughs> great. 
and that is it. And I'm gonna step back from my mask on and give the show to P for this awesome egg because what is a bacon egg and cheese without the egg? Yeah. I don't know. Should I keep my mask on? I mean, no, y'all know what I'm I mean, Pal, I can hear you pretty well with your mask on. It's up to you. What y'all think? What y'all think? In the, in the comments, I'm kind of looking hey, at the comments. We just want you to be safe. So whatever you're comfortable okay. with, we're all good. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my uh, burner again as soon as I turn it on with the safety mechanism. I have it on medium high heat and I have some grapeseed oil here because of the smoke point. So it looks like a lot of... Um, oil is going into this pan, but that's not the case. Um, so now that I am moving over here, I am going to grab two eggs and put them in my bowl. And here's the, the really interesting part that I think a lot of people um, forget to kind of um, do with their eggs, right? Like the perfect scrambled egg um, actually needs some type of moisture. Yes, I mean, the French way is like straight up eggs, low temperature, but I like to introduce a little bit of buttermilk to really reinforce the tanginess of the guava and to really highlight that creaminess of the brioche. So I do a little splash and I'm gonna bring it to the close zoom up here. Can oh, you guys wow. see? So great. maybe yeah. that's like a tablespoon of buttermilk. So I whisk until I feel confident that all the um, buttermilk has incorporated. And then now I usually like to use um, a spatula with a very thin, um, what's it called? Oh, edge, yeah. <laughs> what did I say? I was like, what the hell are you trying to say? Okay, it has a very thin edge, your spatula. So you want to get a really thin one that's, um, is it silicone? It looked like it was silicone. It is silicone. I um, I bought this one from um, Amazon. Wait, are, is that one of our sponsors? That is. So um, Hi, maybe I think <laughs> Kat can find that spatula. And, uh, we can li link it in there because I'm actually always looking for good spatulas. And that one had some nice edges to it and um, it looked it looked sturdy. For sure. So I am going to lower this to a very low temperature. I'm going in. Ooh. And right away, you can see that my egg started already bubbling. Yeah. I like to put my cheese. Oh, wow. You're putting it right in there. Ah! Ah! We're all good. Cheese was saved. So that so looks now, like a cheddar. That looks like a cheddar or a sharp cheddar. Yes. Sharp cheddar, sharp yellow cheddar. Um, and I like to kind of like start to flip my egg around the cheddar to really help the um, raw egg kind of like move away from the center. So if you can look, I'm going to try to zoom in. Oh my gosh, you can amazing. see that my egg is like coming off of the nonstick pan. Yep. And even if you weren't doing it with a nonstick, with enough um, oil, you would be able to emulate this situation as well. What's the temperature on your skillet? Oh my goodness. Uh, medium. Oh, you mean like not like See, that's, I use so much like a uh, thermometer for everything. I was like, oh my God, I don't know. Uh, oh, so I did with like medium low heat. Medium low heat. Okay. Yes. That's a great tip. So I like to break it up a little bit. I am so doing this because I have all these ingredients. So I'm going to totally try this. I've never just like put, put a piece of cheese like on top of the egg and just start folding it over like that. That's I amazing. feel like it really captures a lot of that moisture. And really, I don't want to see too much color. I just want to see the the cheese melt it, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm done here and I am going to grab a plate and I am going to move this guy out of the way. Hopefully I don't burn myself. Wish me luck. Yeah. yeah be careful. So here I have my, my brioche bun and now I am going to stick this onto the. Ooh, that looks great. Look at that cheese. Watch out, hot. So, 
you would think that this is the end of our game of our guava bacon egg and cheese demo not yet because sometimes i don't put it on the sandwich oh, oh. <laughs> so i actually um <laughs> so i uh oh no it's sticking guys the guava's done oh good ah. Oh, oh no, wait, this one. Yay! Woo! <laughs> he was Thanks. just backwards. So I do three slices of bacon because you shouldn't skimp on the bacon. Never skimp on that bacon. And that wow. is your most perfect <gasps> bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. And I serve it with a spicy mayo ketchup. So I have mayo, ketchup, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. Even though I don't actually eat spicy, I think that this complements the sandwich so, so well. And I don't know, that's it. That's how you- How many of these sandwiches are you oh. making at the, at, at the bakery? We make almost 50 or more a day. No, more than that. More, more than yeah, 50, we, like we, 100. Yeah. Oh, wow. we, we sell out quite a lot and all of them are pre-ordered, but we only have like the capacity to do like a little batch, like small micro batches, because I'm also the one cooking it, and that's a lot. That's a lot <laughs> that buns. is a lot. It's and a lot of buns also to make fresh. Oh, I know, um, I'm okay. sure. And I would just, I really love, so those of you who don't have the issue, I mean, they, it was a great, it's it's a great interview. I, I love, I, I think, um, actually, I, I have to say, Carrie, this, like, the probably the best, my favorite uh, podcast, like, Radio Cherry Bomb episode was with Paula, because oh, it was just, I thought it was so, sp I really fell in love with you in there, and I really, and also this piece, too, was great, um, but I love what you did at La Bodega Bakery, and I know that, La oh, wow, look at that, wait, let's show the other camera, I want to see in the other camera, yes, oh, my gosh, that looks amazing, Got all the gooeyness from the cheese. The egg is oh, perfectly wow. cooked the and soft and fluffy. Great. I want to eat it. But you guys all right, I wanted it. to ask you though, La Bodega Bakery, why, why did you come up with the name? Um, Because I wanted to, Um, I was homesick. I was mm. homesick and, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you just hang out? Let's chat a little bit and, and you can totally eat your sandwich if you can. Okay. So I, I was homesick and I wanted to um, create something that felt like home and felt like my childhood. Thank you, D. Um, in DC, I just felt like there was nothing like it in DC. We don't have a big corner store slash bodega um, market situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I just figured, why not? You know, it's the middle of a pandemic. Um, you know, it, like if I lose, I lose, you know what I mean? And, and so far, it's been so good. You know, um, last week we hit our hundredth order on online ordering, and that was such because we just launched it. So that was like super huge, you know. Yeah. Uh, to see everybody supporting like that, and not only supporting um, like small scale, it's like really big scale, and I, I'm just so grateful. I am gonna eat this on camera. Hopefully, please. You guys don't judge me too I'm much. I'm gonna live vicariously through you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a mouthful. So those of you who want to like, because for me, if you follow La Bodega Bakery on Instagram, you can see all like their announcements on like, it's so much fun, like seeing all, because it's, there's something new every month, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And there's always limited quantities. They always sell it fast. So I would definitely go check them out. And also online, you can, there's, they sell a lot of, you, you sell and ship as well, right? Yeah, so we are moving, you can show them here. So this is our cookie pack. Mm -hmm. And um, we sell chocolate chip thickums, assorted variations of chocolate chip, uh, chip thickums, and we um, sell golden rum cake and chocolate rum cake. Mm -hmm. And soon we will be expanding, but not yet. We're still struggling, <laughs> making sure that we make um, what you guys want from us right mm -hmm. now so we gotta put the pause on that you know what i mean we gotta slow it down <laughs> and there's some really sweet merch on there as well so i also wanted to ask how did you how did you three all meet can we start with like deandra and like how you, how you guys 
came to like I met Paula at our last job a few years ago. Uh, she was the incoming executive pastry chef, and I was there waiting patiently. Yep. Um, to be honest, that entry into that job, if I could have done it differently, I would have done it differently. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what's going on? Stranger danger! Intrusion! Anyways, um, when Deandra, um, when I joined the team at Kiss and Kin, um, I felt like um, Deandra was hurting, you know, mm -hmm. and I was very like empathetic towards that, and I didn't know um, how to fix it, right? Because I, I saw that she was working so hard. She had been uh, without a pastry chef for so long, and I just didn't know um, what to do in that situation, right? Like I had this amazing opportunity in front of my my face, right, and um, I knew that I could build so many things, but do I do it at the detriment of somebody that has been doing the work, you know? Mm -hmm. So I put her, I like uh, pulled her to the side and I was like, um, can you explain to me how you feel, you know? And I don't know if you want to talk about it a little bit. I, it was one of those questions, like, instead of being like, oh, I'm okay. You know, that one time when someone asked you and you're really not okay, you can't take it. It was that, and it was like, how are you? And I'm just like, I'm a mess. I'm sad. I'm unhappy. I'm okay. But I'm not okay. I'm perfectly okay being not okay because I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. So we, um, once we touched base and I saw that she was not, um, how she likes to say, okay. Um, or supported. Or supported. Or supported, I, yes. I, supported. I um, vowed to um, fix that. I vowed to fix it and I said, all you need to give me is two weeks. Yep. Give me two weeks. And if you don't like it, then you're free to leave. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, oh free to leave with a letter of recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that's, oh, that's, see that, that's awesome. And uh, so far she has not wanted to leave yet. Yet. Not Every now and then she want to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> I Every now and then. <laughs> but um, it was, you know, something that was um, in me to understand that I just wanted her to feel welcome and mm -hmm. in a place where she can learn um, and grow and not feel like she has to prove herself um, as opposed to just coming into work and feeling like it's it's a different place. Like you shouldn't feel strife when you come to work right. oh, uh, yeah. or at least the manager should feel that. And then <laughs> the employee should feel peace, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Let me take care of that, you know, and that's exactly what I did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, she got that's promoted. Like a great example of like how, yeah, how to, you know, it's to manage is it's really hard. But I love how, yeah, to make your employees feel supported is really what what it is and heard, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna look for my mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Nikki, how did you how did you meet Paula? Oh, I met her. Three years ago at Iron Gate, that was my first line cook job. Mm -hmm. um, we had a different pastry chef back then, and then she quit, and then we met. I met her. Oh my god! I, I saw her. I started seeing her working, and I was like, "What you doing?" <laughs> and she was like, "What?" So you went and from I, savory. You went from savory to sweet, and started yes, cooking I did, pastries. I did. Oh, wow. I did leave. I did leave the restaurant for like a month and a half to yeah. go back home and she was like come back yeah so i did come back and she was like you were out for two months i was like it was a month and a half two months <laughs> it was two months it was short for me but long for them it was long but for me i did come back she she put me under her wing but i still had to work the line which is a lot of work <laughs> but I'm now fine. you don't work the line i don't i don't anymore Ooh. now i work the line oh. How, what the heck <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, yeah. it was one of those things where Nikki kept asking to learn. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like that stickler that's like, no, my recipes are my own. Actually, if you can have the same technique and you, you can emulate it without me in the room, then kudos to you, power to you. You earn that recipe. That joint is yours now. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where um, Nikki kept coming early. 
she would stay late, she would come on her days off, she would go with me to events, and she kept wanting to learn, so I kept wanting to teach. And uh, so far, we've been at four gigs now. Yeah, Doña Dona. Oh, yeah, yeah, four. Oh, my God. Four gigs. Four gigs, three gigs later with Deandra. Wow. You know, but, you I know. You, you all really take care of each other. It's not, I mean, I know, I know you mentioned Paula, like, in our, we had, like, a members meeting. You mentioned how much they take care of you, too. And you just have to take care of each other because you can't do your work if, you know, you know, yeah. if they're, they're not well. Yeah, they they try to um, beat any anybody that is mean to me up. So I know Carrie said in the comments, no fighting, but sometimes uh, sometimes you have to like go to sleep, go to sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they they really do take care of me because I am actually nicer than I put up like put up front. I'm really nice, and um, I think they feel like I get taken advantage of quite often. Mm -hmm. So they go to bat for me and they kind of remind me that I'm worth more than what I perceive my value to be. So, and well, so good. yeah, someone, someone had a question for you. They want to know, Paula, were there people in your life who taught you to be a good and supportive boss? Oh, Ooh, my goodness. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> uh, I think, okay, so there has been um, so many bosses that are, you know, pivotal to who I am today, you know, um, and I think that there's some bosses that showed me what I don't want to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, yes. and that's a Boss really great example. You, you don't want to be as well. It's true. I think right. all bosses teach something. Right. And then there's bosses, you know, that were strict, but actually very kind, right? Mm -hmm. And like Jacques Torres is very strict, very like to the, like, if this is not this way every single time, you know, I'm in trouble, right? But he would show me how to make it that way every single time, right? So there are so many bosses that I had to go through that taught me so many different things that showed me that with a little more kindness and having structure and supporting them, they'll support me back, you know? Yeah, so it's pretty good. You know what I mean? It's pretty so far so good. I'm not perfect though. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, they're like, "Oh, you're the perfect manager." Man, I'm not that. I'm not okay. You know, I go crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but with what I lack in um, certain things, I make up with um, love. Oh, I love that. And yeah. so, any, anything exciting in the works for La Bodega Bakery? Shoot, is there any pop-ups we should be you know, keeping an eye out for. Yeah, so we, oh yeah, so for the holiday activation, if you're in DC, where DeAndra actually made, uh, so DeAndra is the babka queen. Babka yes, queen. I gave her three weeks to work on a babka recipe and I was like, you gotta get this in three weeks. We open in three weeks, okay, bye. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so far for the last four months, DeAndra has been making like these like picturesque perfect every single time bob does every yeah. well not every day but every, every shift every, <laughs> every shift you know what i mean um it's not every day they work a very european style um work week very cool very uh hip of me to make that up for them can i join you it's a four-day work week and they only have three services so oh wow I know, right? What? Nice. I mean, hello, can I sign up too? No, I'm just kidding. I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> There's a lot of food costs that goes into this. Um, but she made a eggnog babka. And wow. it is delicious. There is like this like rum flavor and the ganache is just like, and she coats it the outside with ganache. With more ganache. Uh, oh, never mind. Sorry guys, the ice machine decided to say hello on the zoom so i got scared i was like run uh, <laughs> if very, anybody I'm wants to if you haven't noticed so how do we hear about so if like i guess for those of you in dc and want to snag your babka how do we order it oh yeah so um for the uh festivus uh the 23rd uh i think that it closes today but you can go on my uh instagram profile and there is a link tree 
that has a very bodega holiday whatever it is that I called it extravagant nope I don't think that's it <laughs> extravaganza <No. laughs> we could totally take it right we don't mind <laughs> I'm gonna go right now and be like extravagant everyone that's Paula's Instagram's in the chat so if you want to snag that the, the eggnog bob cut now's your chance um that this has been so much fun it's been fun to meet the whole team and I think this issue was so nice because we got to meet all of you and I feel like you all have created something very special and we're so excited for you um oh there's a yeah there's the talk page for babka there it is guys get your babka now um and one uh, so one more question that someone had is is there going to be another bakers against racism sale bake sale next year are going to be doing it in 2021 uh, absolutely yeah we just finished our last activation um of 2020 which was bake the holidays better and that one was really inspiring because even myself like being in the restaurant industry is hard right Mm -hmm. Right now, it's like you are trying to make monopoly money, uh, be accepted in an ATM, you know, and it, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Our restaurant industry is failing. And I just wanted to inspire a little bit of joy and um, make sure that people had the chance to bake for what they believe in, you know, mm -hmm. and for me, it's black lives, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For me, making sure that that wasn't just a little trending moment in June is why I do that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. There's so much, especially with like adults and, and Black American culture that helped me as a Dominican American who is Afro Latina understand where I even fit in the world. Um, I know right now I look very pale. I'm sorry. I haven't seen the Caribbean sun in a long time. So COVID, <laughs> I don't like you. But, you know, that kind of like cultural significance made me finally understand where I, I fit in the world and who I um, who I am, you know? So it is, it, you mean, you know what I mean? Black people inspire every single day. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Every day. And you've been, I mean, you've inspired so many bakers. I mean, there are still bakers who are still doing the sale. Um, we met one that just actually um, used bakers against her. It really helped her figure out her new, like her, her baking strategy, um, you know, just doing these drops, like kind of what you guys are doing is like you have limited quantities. So you don't have to overexert yourself making all these things, hoping no one, you know, that no one will, will pick up or buy. So I feel like, oh my gosh, you've, you've done so much for bakers and thank you all for joining us today. Um, if those of you don't have the issue, again, visit one of our stockists on our website, but this is such a beautiful, beautiful spread of all three of them. You need to check out also the, the the podcast interview. I thought it was so great if you want to learn more about Paula and her work. Um, but thank you again, Nikki, Deandra, Paula for joining us. This has been so great. I'm going to make these this candied like, guava bacon. It's just really rocking my world. Bye, Paula. Bye, Nikki. Bye, Deandra. Bye. Bye.